This video is made possible by CodeNotary.io, tamper-proof notarization for all your digital objects. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Sometimes it becomes necessary to do a cold IPL of a MBS 3.8 as delivered by the TK4 distribution. Uh, that sometimes requires a cold IPL of MPS itself to reformat the link pack area, which is kind of a cache of the most used, widely used uh, modules of the MPS operating system itself and various subsystems such as VTAM. And sometimes it becomes necessary to do a cold format of the JS2 spool space. So in this video we see, we'll see how to do a manual IPL of MBS 3.8 as delivered by TK4. For this purpose, as you can see here, I have this website and I downloaded the latest update, uh, the latest version of MBS uh, 3.8 TK4, this one. It doesn't really matter what version we're using, the, system, the, the procedure doesn't change. I already have it here on my desktop. I'm gonna do this today on Windows. Uh, it's very, very similar on Linux. I would say almost exactly the same on Linux. So as you know, uh, when we start um, TK4, it, there is an automated procedure that makes it automatically IPL and restart everything. So how do we get in there and stop the automated procedure and do it manually? First thing is we need, of course, console access to the MVS console and to the mainframe console. As you know, there's a directory here called unattended. This one, we want to go into unattended. And then there is a batch program each for Linux and for Windows to set uh, the system into console mode. As delivered, by default, it doesn't let you access the console unless you go through the web interface, which we're not going to do today. So I have here my, um, my trusted shell and I go into desktop and then uh, into, yeah, here it is. And then we go into unattended. And as as you can see here, there's two the batch jobs. These are for Windows, and then there's these two jobs here, which are for Linux. So we're going to execute, obviously, because we're on Windows right now, we're going to execute the one for Windows. So all we have to do is set console mode, and it runs it and says Hercules console may more mode activated for unattended operations. Press any key. Okay, so that is done. Now we can just start our uh, beloved TK4 by okay, uh, running just MVS. There's a batch job which starts everything. However, if we do that, then um, as I said, <laughs> we're actually starting into uh, automated mode. Uh, and, um, and in that mode, we will not have enough time to stop it to get into manual mode. So how do we do that? So in order to avoid the automated IPL, we have to invoke Hercules ourselves. Usually you would start this with MVS, right? You just type the MVS and everything will come up, but then again, it's automated. So to do that, we need to understand, first of all, where are the configuration files for Hercules kept in TK4? They're kept in a directory called conf, which I can also show you here. If we go back one, you see there's a conf directory. It's actually the first one alphabetically. And this is the uh, default configuration file that we can invoke and, and start the mainframe using this one. So if I open this one, you'll see that there is all this, all the stuff is in here. Um, did I? Sorry, this one, uh, tk 4cnf I pressed in the wrong one. So uh, here's the normal configuration and that's what we want to invoke uh, with Hercules. So one little change I will do here, which I always do, uh, I put two CPUs because it runs perfectly fine with two. And um, actually I always change the serial number so I know that I touch this configuration file. So if you see a five here at the front, that's usually my mainframe. And 
this one the cpu model i've seen this many times discussed in various on, on discord and other places the cpu model is just a string it has no meaning whatsoever to hercules so you you can change you can put in here mickey mouse or 999 it, it, it doesn't matter i put in 3081 because that's what i started to program on um so that's it and if you want to change the offset then in my case i'll have to do minus six okay so we save this file and this is the one we're going to invoke to start our code so i have of course here um i go quickly um full screen so I have Hercules installed in my system, Hercules 3.13, any good Hercules will do, 3.13 is perfect, perfectly good Hercules. So what we do is we go to this directory level where MVS TK4 is installed and then we do Hercules minus F for configuration file, conf TK4 this one we want right so we go back one level and then we say Hercules conf okay so then it comes up and it doesn't continue IPL right that's the main thing we wanted usually if you just type MVS the batch job will just start everything but in this case the machine has done what you would call in the mainframe world an IML. It starts initial machine loading, loads all the microcode and everything, and the machine doesn't start operation yet. So we don't start anything here yet, and the machine is ready to IPL, but it hasn't started yet. So now we do something which tells it to IPL from a particular address. IPL 148, that's the IPL volume. Okay, and here already you have the nucleus of MVS has already started. Specify system parameters for release 3.8 VS2. So now at this point, if we want to do a, a, a code formatting of the link pack area, this is already the point where we have to give some special commands. The link pack area is an area of the address space of the memory of the of MVS where some frequently used modules, both of MVS, VTAM, and other important subsystems are being kept, so they don't have to be read in from the disk. And they're, it's kind of like a cache for important parts of the operating system and important subsystems. And sometimes when you make some changes to that, such as, for instance, when you add new terminal lines, see my previous video on this, uh, video 179, um, then it becomes necessary to do a formatting of the link pack area. Um, here you have the page by IBM where it explains the link pack area compromises several areas, both above and below 16 megabytes. Of course, for MVS 3.8, which is a 24-bit operating system, uh, there's only below 16 megabytes. Um, it is pageable, so, so the operating system can page it in and out. And there's some parts which, of course, cannot be paged in and out, uh, such as the parts which deal with paging itself. That it would be if you page out the code that does the paging, then it's on the disk, and you need to run it then. You, you can't page it in because it's on the disk uh, and other such um, important things. So sometimes it become, becomes important to reformat this area and there's a command called CLPA, which stands for cold uh, or create link pack area. How do we do that? Well, once we're here at this stage, we do reply 00 CLPA, create link pack area. So that's a command to the nucleus of MVS. Uh, as you know, right now there's very, very little running. It's just the nucleus and the console operation. Everything else has not been loaded yet. So this is a very, very early stage of the IPL process. And maybe one day I'll make a video where I explain exactly what happens during the IPL of MVS or ZOS. What is the, what is the uh, procedure and the order of things getting loaded? But right now, let's just focus on getting this first thing done, reformat the link pack area. So we just do that. And of course it goes very quickly and that's it it's already done um, so you see now we already have just to start okay so in this case um, 
we did the CLPA, but uh, since Jazz 2 already stopped, we would have to uh, started. Sorry, we would now. As you can see, how do you know that Jazz 2 started? You just do dollar DA, and it says no active job, so that's HASP, Houston Automatic Spool Program, uh, answering, telling us that they're um, it's actually running. So if we want to, um, if we, so everything is already coming up with automation, as you can see. And uh, now it's a bit too late to do a call format of JS2 because JS2 is already up. So at this point, the best thing would be to shut down again. And uh, we can do this while it's still it's still storing, but it's shut down already. So we know that we have to. Um, we can do it with the procedure start, shut down, or we can do FBSP pilot shut fast but I actually prefer to do it by hand so I do cancel GRP which we don't need cancel it MF1 okay uh, cancels NASL uh, SNA solicitor let's see what else we have here I cancel the BSP pilot I don't need that cancel the command processor cancel TP see what we have okay um, stop TSO and TSO is done at this net now we have to stop the network Z net quick Z stands for stop okay okay so the V time is gone net is is V time obviously and oh, we still have the BSP pilot running that's gone and now we only have jazz 2 so this is a good time right now to stop jazz 2 and then restart it with cold formatting of the spool space how do we do that so um, you can see here the only thing that's left is jazz 2 so we just do um, we just do purge uh, purge stop jazz 2 and now, of course, Jest2 will say it cannot stop because um, there's some stuff that it still needs to um, drain. You see there's some lines here active. Those are um, remote job entry lines. It would have to stop it, but since VTAM is already down and, and, the, um, and, and we would have to drain the lines. So Okay. See what the status is of the lines yeah it drains but it actually doesn't actually stop it so we could we could, there's ways to make it go down but since we are going to reform it anyway i just usually do like this purge jazz 2 uh, event okay which means just kill it and then uh, jazz 2 starts to abend it tells you the the status of the registers because obviously that should never happen, so it, it, it makes sure to let us know. And then I will do, uh, so it now adds wants some action, right? And it's asking us for some input. And so we say, um, reply 01 purge, to purge, purge the event. So the dump is now purged, and we don't keep that. And so now we have MBS still up, as you can see it's still answering but there's nothing running other than the nucleus so now we can just do um, Z end of day shuts down the SMF recording and then we do quiet and the system is ready to go down so we quit this and we started once again exactly the same way right we started from the comp system we don't start with the M because then we start with MBS it would start the automation which we don't want so we started the same way again. Okay, and remember we IPL from 148. And here is the nucleus of MBS saying IEA is nucleus always. So um, what do we want to do? So we say uh, reply 00, zero. command z equals 03. And why is that? Because that's how Jurgen, oops, sorry, 
the creator of the TK4 distribution has done it. So he says, if you want to do manual operations, you start, that's exactly what we did, and connect all the consoles, and which we don't need to do at this point yet, but um, when we get this message, which is what we have here, right? As you can see here, then we just say reply 00, zero command 03, which um, uh, selects the non-existent parliament members command 03, and thus prevents any further in initialization, right? Um, so by selecting something that doesn't exist, we stop all automatic uh, initialization of, I of uh, MBS. So we do that. Okay, so now the bare minimum we started, so uh, the paging subsystem is up, the SMF is running, the missing interrupt handler is complete, but there's nothing running. Okay, so now of course we would do a, if you want to do a cold format of the JS2 spool space, we'll do JS2. And here is Hasp, which is JS2 obviously telling us it wants some input. Um, specify options. So we can just say reply 00 format. And to this day, that's exactly the same way, whether MVS or ZOS, um, it's exactly the same way. So as you can see here, it's being formatted. Cold start is in progress. Hasp00 is being formatted. And there's other, so, uh, other command line options you can give to JS2, uh, such as using a different uh, JS2 parameter file or other stuff like that. But, um, but if you just give it zero format, it will format the spool space. You do that after, for instance, you recreate the spool space or if you add more spool um, uh, data sets or if you move it from one disk to another, that's how you do it. So now is JS2 running? By default, when you, after it formats, it starts. So let's see, $DA, that's how you make sure if JS2 uh, is running. Yeah, and it answers back, HASP00, Houston Automatic Spool Program, program no active job. So now we have JS2 running and the nucleus, of course, running and, and nothing else right so there's some initiators running here and everything else we would have to do by hand so um, the proper way to do this would be to start the um, tcas which is the address space handler for tso you start uh, the net and you would start uh, as these all come up then you start tso um, so this is how you format uh, JS2. If you want to do different things to JS2, then you just have to read the proper manuals for JS2. Um, Hasp to uh, boot savers. This, yeah, this should be here in bit savers, some manuals. It's a little slow sometimes. System has two version logic. That's an important manual. Um, so there's plenty of manuals here. My internet connection is a bit slow today. Yeah, uh, as you can see. But um, this is, um, you find all the HASP2 manuals, which are the ones, OSVS2 is the same as MVS. That was the previous name of MVS was OSVS2 for a short while, and then it became MVS. Actually, the, during the programming, while IBM was um, working on, on OSVS2 or what became MVS, they thought for a while they would call it the Advanced Operating System, AOS. Um, but then they just went for OSVS2. It sounds more impressive, more um, business-like, more, I don't know how it sounds. You know, back in the days, operating systems with a slash in it sounded like very advanced. Um, and so, uh, single name operating systems sound a little bit too consumerish maybe yeah that's the word so by putting complicated slashes and stuff in it it sounds less consumerish 
Um, and so you can read all the command line options there from those manuals. Um, they still apply to this day. I don't know of any HASP2 command um, that is not valid today anymore. Maybe if you are watching this video and you can think of one, then please uh, post it in the comments below this video. But uh, so this is it. And, um, and um, one thing we can do is to automate everything now. We start the um, the command the VSP pilot and then it will start everything normally again. Or we can just of course just do um, stop just to and uh, start the, shut down the operating system or SMF recording and then we do a quiet and then we get out and now we started this time with MVS right and by oops. By starting with MVS, now we have accomplished what we wanted to do. We did a, f a call format of the link pack area before, and we reformatted the just to spool space, and so now we can let it start normally. Uh, let's see here how far it is. Yeah, just to started, and everything else is coming up. So, yeah, everything looks perfectly fine. And now it will come up, and eventually you will be able to connect with your uh, 3270 emulator or whatever, and uh, start working. So these are the steps to do a call format of the LPA and of the Just2 spool, spool space for TK4. I mean, let's let's remember that this is TK4 specific. If you have a self-gen MVS from any of the procedures that are around, such as from Mosley's uh, Jay Mosley's website. Let's say J mostly sysgen. Um, if you go any other route, then the procedure to do a cold IPL will be different. This, what I showed today, only applies to TK4, the most widely distributed version of MVS out there on the internet. I think almost everybody is using it. It's also the most fun. It has a lot of operating systems, a lot of languages, a lot of uh, stuff in it, and an update 9. I'm pretty sure will come out this year. I'm very excited about that because there's going to be many fixes to small bugs, smaller and bigger bugs in um, in TK4 update 8, such as, for instance, Algol has a bug, the uh, COBOL compiler, the, uh, uh, the extended reference wasn't working before and now it works. Um, there is a uh, Rex compiler, um, uh, sorry, a Rex interpreter now by um, Peter Jacobs and... Uh, and Mike Rossman, some of my stuff is in there. So there's a lot of uh, 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 very exciting changes for TK4 Update 9, and it's been, I think now, three years in the making. So uh, I know that Jurgen Winkelmann and all the others are working on it, and I'm very excited, I can't wait for to uh, start testing it. I hope I will be one of the early testers as soon as it comes out in the next three to four to six to nine months. <laughs> And uh, when it's out and then it's fully tested and removed all the bugs, then I'm sure that Jurgen will release it. And um, that uh, that's going to be a great version of TK4. Um, can't wait to have it. So, um, as you've seen, yeah, here it's up in its, all its glory and all its beauty. As I've said a few times, I really um, could do without this sleepy cat. I, uh, I don't find it that great to look at. But anyway, it's a Jürgen Winkelmann's decision. And, um, and so that's it. If you have any questions, then please post in the comments below this video. If you like my videos and you have not subscribed yet to the Motion Explain Fan channel, now would be a perfect time to do it. And uh, see you soon around again on this channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye.